I am here to talk about my band, The Gringos, or Os Gringos, as we're called down here. We were invited to answer some questions about our experience down here as a band. We were invited by Be The Media to uh, talk a little bit about our band and our experience here in Brazil because I am a West Hartford native. And so it's really cool to be able to talk about my experience here with the people from my own hometown. So I want to thank Be The Media for, for this opportunity. I don't think anybody here was planning on pursuing a music career, um, but it happened so organically. The whole process was you know, at Daniel's house in his backyard after work, we all taught classes. I was immediately influenced by the dynamics between João and Jimmy. Uh, João uh, with his background in writing and Jimmy uh, with all of the skills that he has uh, on the guitar. I was very inspired by that and I immediately said, man, teach me what you know, Jimmy, because I want to be able to compose, you know, because I dabble with writing and I think that, you know, we could do something with composition. And we would uh, go in the quintal and we'd drink some cachaça and Jimmy would bring his guitar and we'd play some music. And then slowly but surely we're in a music, we're in like a talent show. And then after that we're playing at a local bar. And then after that we're, you know, taking a van a hundred kilometers away to go to another city to play at a bar. And then after that we're in Sao Paulo and Rio and playing with uh, groups that are really well known like High Mundos. It's one of the only platinum selling bands in Brazil and we open for them. As Ron said, I met him in Los Angeles uh, in 2008 when we both were living there and um, I was working in, in LA and decided that I wanted to travel the world and Jerome was down here, as he said, finishing his master's. And I asked Jerome for a job. He put a good word in for me, and I came down shortly thereafter with the job, thanks to Jerome. We're sitting here laughing because we're like, well, we're not really sure what those are. I mean, we've got some basic things that we would like to, to, to reach, such as, um, you know, living off of music. It's something that right now we all have day jobs. I'm, I'm a teacher. Daniel works at a, a company. He's a quality control engineer of some sort. Justin's in college, he's doing his master's degree. I think our, our next step uh, is, would be to you know, be able to live off of just playing music, which uh, we're learning is uh, pretty challenging you know, because of the industry. Hey, I'm Justin. I'm uh, an Oregonian. I uh, grew up out on the West Coast and uh, I came down to Brazil in 2014. Similarly to how Jimmy got here, uh, João, actually, I was searching for English jobs after, search, uh, after I'd served in the Peace Corps in Indonesia. So I was finishing up my time there and I wanted to continue traveling. And uh, I was throwing my resume out there, schools all over Brazil, and João happened to, happened to get mine and uh, got in, cut, in touch with me. And so we made contact and I wound up down here. Uh, my name is Daniel, I am uh, the other guitarist in the band, and I am an Indiana native. I came down here to Brazil in 2009 to teach English at a school here in Itajubá and ended up meeting uh, João and Jimmy when they came down here in 2012. Shortly thereafter, we had already come up with some songs, and that was where, you know, Joan talked about uh, the fact that we were able to get a few shows, and then you get a few more, and then people start following you, and it's just been a very organic experience, and the way I explain it is, uh, anytime we put in one, we get back two, in one way or another, whether it means it's a new show or a new fan, and that has what has made us believe in this project and the story that comes with it. I think music is something I discovered earlier. I was doing my master's degree. I did a, my master's in education at LMU in Los Angeles. 
and I, I came principally because of that. I wanted to do my research outside of the country. Um, why Brazil specifically? Uh, I have citizenship here because my father is Brazilian, and um, so it makes like living here and working here very easy. Writing is something that's always been with me, um, and then rock and this type of music that we play now is purely a, a product of my experience with with these four gentlemen. Uh, my family uh, is from the New England region. Uh, my sister currently lives in Connecticut. My grandfather lived in New York. My grandmother was from New Jersey. And my father was born in Sao Paulo in the 1950s. Uh, so I always heard about Brazil growing up. I had never been. Uh, I was always interested in Brazil, Brazilian culture, always wanted to come. And then when I met João in Los Angeles and discovered his father was also Brazilian, uh, it kind of just uh, solidified that desire, and I made it happen in 2012. I came down here. Yeah, we wanted to add a, qu a question for Guilherme, um, who is the only pure Brazilian in the in the group. Bom, eu acredito que a convivência e e o intercâmbio cultural existente nos últimos anos, para mim, como brasileiro, sendo o único brasileiro da banda, tem sido um presente realmente na minha vida, certo? por conta de, de ter a oportunidade não somente de conviver com pessoas de, outro, de outros países, mas de absorver é, questões culturais e, e, e humanas de pessoas assim que, teoricamente, eu não teria muito contato se não fosse a banda, no caso. Então, para mim, a banda é mais que um, que um grupo de pessoas tocando música juntos. É, é um grupo de pessoas que é, trocam muita, muitas experiências e muitas vivências e, e acontecimentos, independente da, da naturalidade, como eu sempre digo, duas coisas que são universais são música e amizade, e a gente tem bastante disso aqui nessa banda. So as uh, you can see from the album cover, there are uh, five different animals there. The name of the of the album is The Animal Kingdom, and so well, first, why the Animal Kingdom, I guess, would be a good good place to start. Um, pretty much, it's just based on, I think, everybody's path here. We're all young men. We're in early 30s. I think, you know, I always came with a kind of a heavy spiritual side. I, was a very, I am a very spiritual person. And, um, and I think that kind of inserting myself into the real world, I, this is like, you know, as a young man, my early 20s, uh, you know, working and making my own money and dealing with paying, you know, just, just re everyday things that I didn't have to do as a, as, a, as a teenager made me think about, you know, the world of competition and, and, and these things that, that I think don't fit into the spiritual world. They are part of the animal kingdom. They aren't part of the spiritual kingdom. Um, and so philosophically, I think it's, it's connected to that. Um, we went ahead and then decided to select our, our power animals, and I'll, I'll have... Daniel, talk about the power animals. Oh, but I'm I'm the wolf. <laughs> so uh, it's actually kind of a funny story um, about how we came about this question of what are animals. Um, my wife has a cousin who is involved in a lot of uh, spiritualistic rituals uh, with Santo Daime here in Brazil, and uh, I actually went to her and I said, "How do we find out what our spiritual, our spirit animals are?" She suggested that we do research about traits that we identify ourselves. I handle a lot of the business aspect of things, and I like to push the initiative forward. So I identified with the ram. My power animal is the elephant. Um, as the bassist in the band, I bring uh, kind of a lot of stability and, and power. Uh, musically, but these guys have also said that in terms of my spirit as a person, I'm an earth sign. Um, so I bring a lot of kind of a calming, peaceful presence that ke keeps us grounded and, and gives us stability. So that's what the elephant represents. My spirit animal is the owl. Um, and since the very beginning of the project, I kind of was the one who was rallying the troops musically. So the owl uh, symbolizes wisdom and given my guidance musically I, I chose the owl o animal é, o qual eu sou representado dentro do álbum é o curvo e acredito que é, eu tenha tenho me identificado com esse animal por causa do é, da questão um pouco mais é, mística e, e ligada à parte de história por ser professor de história claro e também por me identificar com a questão é, 
mais mais voltada à parte de, de do fundamento da, da história em si mesmo, como eu venho dizer. Porque o Corvo é um álbum, um, uma ave que sempre é representada na parte mitológica, em vários contos de várias culturas diferentes. E me identifico bastante por essa questão de, de buscar é, uma representação que seja mais ampla em todos os tipos de história. E como a nossa história é um pouco atípica também, não é uma coisa muito comum, eu me sinto bem é, representado pelo animal por conta de trazer esse elemento é, histórico para dentro da banda. O wolf kind of has like sort of sensibility about the almost in a mystical sense about the group that he's with and I think that might be that fits in well with what I do on stage at the very least in far in terms of like interpreting the sound that they're producing uh -huh. into <clears throat> my dance and my performance and my singing um, and also being able to connect with the audience is also I think uh, uh, requires a certain social acuity um, that um, and I think that's that, that's why I identified most with the wolf. My favorite song on the album, this is our second album right here. It's called uh, The Animal Kingdom. And my favorite song is called Apocalypse Love. Apocalypse Love is the first track on the second disc. There's two discs to the CD. Um, and it's the most bluesy rock tune that we have. And I really like the blues, so that's one reason why I like it. But primarily I like it because it's the, it's the most fun to perform on stage. My preferred song on the album is Candy Coated Nightmare. Uh, it's the second song on the first disc. Uh, but I also love the story of the song and the way that it came together with all five of us and kind of just naturally came about during a jam session. And so definitely Candy Coated Nightmare. Uh, which we already have a music video recorded for, is my favorite song on the second album. So the name of the band came from actually, I don't know, we had been playing maybe one year, and we played a show in the center of town. I mean, it just seems like ages ago, because we were like wearing jeans and t-shirts, and now we have like clothes that we wear on stage, and you know, we're... And we had, at the time, tried to change our name to School of Fish for some... <laughs> some reason and uh and we tried to announce that at the show and then this one guy that was in the back he kind of goes to a lot of the, he kind of was he's another musician in town he just shouted os gringos você so os gringos and so um and then the way my recollection says that everybody in the audience also said yeah os gringos <laughs> maybe not everybody but i feel like everybody did it I think we really found our inspiration uh, being away from home, home being the United States, in a new culture, in a different place, a foreign place. Uh, you end up reflecting a lot about where you came from, you know, the philosophy of that, the music uh, from your heritage uh, plays a big role in our inspiration, at least in the beginning, and I think it has carried us this far. talk about the process of composing and the process of performing um, you know we discuss a lot what what music is at the end of the day for, for each one of us and um, for me you know it's it's an opportunity uh, among many things that music does for us it's an opportunity to bring people together and what I always say is like I, I, the, what I want to leave the message I want to leave for the for who whomever comes to our show is look like during the week you have to be you have to do certain things you know you have to wear certain masks you got to play certain roles and that just tires you out sometimes and music is an opportunity to say you know what forget all that I'm gonna go let loose um, especially rock and roll you know um, it, it's it's an environment that I, in my opinion is liberating and I believe that music is among the many doors that exist to, to liberate yourself kind of spiritually or uh, personally, I think that music. Does, I think that music is that not only playing it, but also experiencing music. And so, um, I think that's what it means to me. It means it's a certain type of liberation. One of our first goals was just to record an album. You know, I think that was something that was very much under our own control. And since then, we've taken steps to uh, increase 
our uh, visibility in the media, uh, for example, would be the media, uh, to get our name out there, to play at larger festivals. And so I think that this is a battle that we fight on two fronts. One is uh, here in Brazil, uh, we need to continue making a name for ourselves. We've played in the expanse that we've played over between Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, uh, up uh, Goiânia. You know, we've covered a large swath of, of Brazil. Uh, but we still have a great desire to take our sound internationally. And so we uh, would love to come visit you guys in West Hartford, Connecticut, or yeah. uh, maybe go to Europe. So those are, those are things that we are looking at and investigating. And uh, I think one of our next goals is to take our sound stateside or to Europe. We want to thank um, everybody uh, there on the other side of the camera uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to talk about our band um, and share our experience with people from my hometown. Um, I'm really appreciative of the fact that West Hartford has received us so well and just been totally open to, uh, to letting us share our story with you guys. So thank you, thank you very much for, for that. And hopefully we'll see you up there in uh, West Hartford. Rock and roll, guys. Rock thank and you. roll.